<sighs> Thank oh. goodness for small mercies. We are sailing. Yes, we just left Greystones and uh, to be honest, not a lot going on in Greystones. It's very, very small. Quite a tight little marina actually to get in and out of, wasn't it? Um, I uh, was on helm uh, on the departure and I think I waited for about the 14th uh, gust to go through before yeah. I thought that's, right, not, that's uh, not Greystone's fault, it's just a gusty morning. <laughs> yeah, but basically what I look for is the gust to pass and then the calm just after the gust. But I let a couple of them go through just so that I could understand the pattern of the wind. Plus I think, to be honest, my, my stomach was in knots. Uh -huh. But um, Greystones is the most expensive uh, marina we've ever stayed in, isn't it Bev? It is. It was uh, 55 euros for the night. So that's 55 euros and on top of that it didn't have any washing facilities. No laundry. No laundry facilities. And it doesn't have a fuel berth. Uh, that is a temporary... Um, yes, but right now... At this time, moment in time it did not have a fuel berth. Um, but they are planning to sort that out. Yes. Um, that's like a bit like Malahide. Malahide didn't have a fuel berth. <laughs> well, they did actually. It's just that it was high up. You had to take a jerry can to it. Yeah, basically, um, you had to go into the slings. <laughs> you had to go into the lift to use the fuel berth at Malahide. But just as we were leaving, they swung the barge out that they use as the fuel pump tune that you tie up to. So that's probably all going now. Yeah. Um, we're going too. We're going at six knots. Uh, some of that's tidal assist, some of it's wind. We're heading toward Wicklow Head, which is a nasty rep, and we'll be glad to get past it, because once we're past Wicklow Head, uh, we should be able to see Arklow on the other side of the bay, and that is our destination for today. Yeah, um, rather than do... Um, when we went out of Dunleary, uh, we did um, Arklow in one trip, but there was no last wind. Year. That last was last year. year. Last year. Um, but we were under motor, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, this year we are actually sailing, but I wanted to go to Greystones because I wanted to see something different. I am a variety. The bad news for Greystones is now she's ticked the list, she'll probably never go back. <laughs> 55 euros, trust me on this. <laughs> no! Uh. I, li I like a lot for 55 euros. Free laundry. <laughs> you don't get free laundry anywhere, madam. You do? Where? Uh, you get free laundry at... Um... Oh, smell. You smell the oil seed. Oh, yes. But anyway, you get free laundry at um, Belfast uh, you Marina. Did, you did do it. I don't know if they still do that. I don't know if they still do it, but you did do. And the last place I've got free laundry is at um, Port Slough. Oh yes, uh, Port Rush. Port Rush. <laughs> Except nobody was rushing. Nobody was rushing, but yeah. But that was free laundry. Oh, but again, smell that! You smell that coming off the land, the scent of the flowers. Oh gosh, yes. But uh, again, just because we had that about two, three years ago, doesn't mean to say that you get that today. The place was under refurb. They were, they were. That's why it was free. It was under refurb. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, wow. The, you lot on camera can't smell it, but the scent of the flowers coming off the land. This, mm. this place is literally bathed in perfume, which is great because sometimes it's bathed in outfalls. You know, just it's just people dump things in the sea, don't they? Yeah, but, but we can smell the rapeseed, but I think for scents... I can't remember, somewhere in Scotland. Oh! Barra. Barra. Castle Bay. Oh my goodness, We Barra. can smell the heather yes. from, from about three miles out. Yeah, Barra. Yeah. Barrow was beautiful on the smells, but this is pretty good. This is pretty close. Right, let's finish our cup of tea and keep an eye out for pots. <sighs> the bane of these coasts. Well, the wind's getting a bit variable and um, 
we've slowed down a bit. We're no longer doing eight knots, <laughs> which was a bit exciting. But we're still doing about four and a half. Um, I think... am actually looking forward to us going slower than that because... You want the cruising sheet. <laughs> I'm going to experiment with my cruise I put a lot of effort into that. I don't blame you, but we're not messing with the configuration we have while it's working. We're well, we're still going at four knots, yeah. Yeah, Wick Wicklow Head is less than an hour away. I can see it through the spray hood. But the big event on the boat at the minute is we're trying out these protein bar things that Gaynor bought. And um, I realised I had not got anything in my grab bag. I don't even have a grab bag. Yeah. So I would love to know from you what I should be putting in my grab bag. <laughs> so, because it's something I really, really need to do. So we have this collection of sweepings off the floor of the Muesli factory get stuck together with toffee. Yeah. And it's fine until you eat all the edible stuff and then you're left with what I can only describe as grit. And you seem to need an awful lot of tea. That's but, the only issue. Uh, I need a lot more tea. And you need molars. <laughs> but anyway, we just think I'm, I'm already, even though this would be something I talk about in the winter, <laughs> I'm mm. already thinking about what to put in it, what I actually need, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It gives me something to think about. I mean, I've taken that much. I need a drink of tea already. <laughs> It's as dry as sawdust, it really is. So we need something that's a bit moister. Mm. But I'm sure you've come up with some uh, interesting things down below. Because it will be something I'd like to talk about at winter. On the plus side, it's obviously the season for oilseed. And the hills of Wicklow are bright yellow in patches. And it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Above Port of Ferry, when we didn't get into that um, a, few, uh, a week back, um, there was a hill behind Port of Ferry and it was covered in yellowy golden oilseed. And it looked for all the world like the promised land. We just couldn't get in. It was so, <laughs> it was so annoying. <laughs> I now know, because what I was hoping was, because I knew that the tide would flip, and but I had half an hour, and I was hoping that the flip back would be slow and gentle and sufficient for me to get through. No, it's not. It's like that. <laughs> We're both big fans of um, the late Terry Pratchett's Discworld series and um, one of the things that is in it is he's all different kinds of people. A bit like Tolkien, but sort of like comedy value Tolkien. There's dwarfs, there's elves, there's things like that. Um, but one Dwarf of the bread. Yes. That's what I'm working on. What's that? It's a, it's a pop just below the surface. Look at it. Oh, look at it. Look at it. It's barely breaking the surface at all. Yeah, no wonder About I 10 metres off. No wonder I missed it. We'll talk about the pots in a bit, but one of the um, things that's a recurring theme in some of the books that he's written is the dwarfs. Tolkien had uh, the elves that had lembas, so elven bread, and one mouthful you could keep going for a whole day on it, apparently. Um, but Pratchett had dwarf bread, which was so hard that they would take it out and look at it, and they would rather eat anything else before they started on the dwarf bread. It would last for ages because no nobody would eat it. I think we've discovered our own supply of dwarf bread. You get this out and you have a look at it, you think. I'm not that desperate. I'm not that <laughs> desperate, not yet. I'll put this back and eat something else, no matter how bad it is. <laughs> if you like muesli for breakfast, this might be your thing. But I think when we've eaten these ones, the experiment will be over. No, I'll be looking for something else. I this have a grab experiment. Back. Oh. No, I'm looking for other foods that I can have in my grab bag. Mm -hmm. Should we continue our lookout for the great hazard of this coast? Yeah. The crab pot. Absolutely, girl. Well, you might be able to hear the engine going. It's because the wind died on us just before we got to Wicklow Head. 
and uh, we had to put the seals away. So we've got the engine on, taking us around Wicklow Head, and the sea's a lot calmer than the last time we were here. Last time we were here it was quite choppy and lumpy, a lot of white caps. Today it's just lumpy. So I can understand why it has a bad reputation though. It is a very, very lumpy bottom, and you know the salty last rule of thumb that if you get a lumpy bottom, a lumpy seabed, you get a lumpy top in the sea. And um, obviously, we have a very lumpy bottom here, it's just the topography of the place. Yeah, but, but because you have that lumpy bottom, it also means that if you have any wind conditions whatsoever, it's just going to become a world of pain really, isn't it? It can do. This, this could very easily whip off. Mm. And speaking of wind conditions, I was just looking at some clouds over that way, and I can see differences in the clouds, um, which might explain why the wind died. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a meteorologist, uh, particularly. I mean, I know some stuff. But up toward Dublin and Greystones, we have clouds, which are fairly normal looking cumulus clouds, flat bottom, lumpy tops. But over there, I've got a very thick looking cloud that has a fairly flat top to it, which to me says there might be some sort of inversion layer in the atmosphere stopping the cloud going up. Um, it's beginning to fall apart over there now. Uh, I don't know whether that's blocking the wind or that, that what's caused the wind to die, but I'm taking it as a sign that there's probably going to be a change in the wind of some sort because the clouds look so different from where we were to where they are over there to what I can see down there. So I'm just going to pay extra attention if there's changes in wind condition because it just might be a harbinger of something to come. difference half a mile makes. Yep, it looks like I was right to be suspicious of the cloud patterns because the wind has completely shifted around to the exact opposite direction here. Um, yeah, so we started the sail um, with the winds coming from the northwest. Um, then we went um, through a dead zone, shall we call it, where there was no wind and obviously you have motored. And now we've got the engine off again. And what's the wind direction do we think we've got now, Bev? Southeast. Southeast. <laughs> but. Oh, I'm right, so I'm going to go make a log entry. You carry on. Uh, yeah, so the winds are coming from the southeast now. Um, because we've just done a change, because we every time we turn, if we turn the engine off, um, then we put it in our log. So uh, that's why Beverly's just going downstairs to make a log entry. But, um, but yeah, we're um, close hauled and I can hear the engine starting to um, go, so I'm just going to, there, hey! <laughs> I've just put us into reverse <laughs> so that we have that wonderful thing that Beverly and I like, silence! Well, yeah, Beverly was right to the, right to uh, Cautious. Well, not cautious, but aware. <sighs> well, the sun's shining and we're approaching Arklow. Um, the sea is lovely and calm. Uh, sandy bottoms, sandy beaches. We can tell it's a sandy bottom from the colour of the sea. It's blindingly obvious, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And uh, we've dodged a whole pile of pots, crab pots. Uh, the entrance is about two miles away. We can't see any pots between us and it. And we're just enjoying the approach. Yeah, it's... Um, <sighs> I just like the fact that it's quiet. Um, you know, we sailed well. You know, I feel very happy because uh, I'm on the helm today. And um, I just like the fact that I prefer it when we're sailing. Well, we're doing four and a half knots. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, and Arco's two miles away, so half an hour to the entrance. Yep, sounds like a plan. Does, doesn't it? <laughs> 